Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, Gaz Williams here and today I'm looking at Elk, or rather the system that's called Elk. And it's a uh, it's an astonishing thing really. Uh, it facilitates real-time music playing over the internet. Now there's a few caveats which I'll explain in a moment, but uh, essentially this is something that I've wanted the internet to be able to do from the beginning, which is to be able to, in this case, plug in a guitar and jam with someone in real time, you know, with them being somewhere else. This is all possible because of this little yellow interface box. Uh, on the front, we can see it's got two microphone XLR inputs, which can also be jack inputs, combi jacks there with phantom power, and there are two headphone sockets, one on a mini jack and a big jack handily around the back. And we can see we've got two line outputs, uh, USB power on USB-C, mini jack for MIDI, and yeah, eight in and out. So that's another eight in and eight out if you've got suitable hardware to connect to it. And a USB host mode. I don't know if that's currently supported, but I guess you could be plugging your MIDI keyboard maybe and USB there to connect to the computer, which it doesn't need to be. What it does need to be connected to, however, is through that Ethernet to put it onto the network. And that's what this thing is really all about, is just a direct box that you can connect to your Ethernet and have incredibly low latency performance, hence being able to jam in real time. Now, as luck would have it, I have a rather special guest joining me to uh, explore this technology. And uh, he's a fellow YouTuber I'm sure you'll all be familiar with. And he'll be making a video as well about this. So you'll have two chances to see about this. And uh, this is Mr. Uh, Robin Vincent. Now, when I am bring Robin in, I'm going to bring him in via the Elk interface. Hello, Robin. Hello. Good to be here. Yeah. So Robin's going to be making his own video as well uh, about this experience. And uh, so keep an eye out for that as well, because it'll give some different perspectives. But um, yeah, so we've both got guitars plugged in. And uh, <laughs> Elk is entirely a, a web-based uh, browser in uh, interface, so uh, you can access it from anywhere. This is what's called backstage, and we can see we're in a session at the moment, but this is where you would launch a session. Um, then we've got this video aspect. Now, this video is using webcams and a talkback system um, to facilitate communications. Um, but the main event really, if I come over here to the mixer, is this you know, we've got this mixer, which allows us to get our own mix against the incoming mix. This is, so Robin, if you play some guitar mm. for me. So you can see Rob, Robin's coming there on that second channel and then Robin's voice is coming My in. My voice coming through this one. Yeah. I mean, what, what strikes me immediately, Gaz, is that we, we're actually having a normal conversation when we usually live stream with each other. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're, you're doing some kind of thing, whether it's Sonic State or some other type conversation, you have this, this barrier of latency. You have this delay between, you know, talking over each other and things like this. But we're just having a regular conversation like we're in the same room. Yeah, it's quite astonishing, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So both of us are, uh, we're not using the talkbacks at the moment because we've got our mics going into channels one on our, on the interfaces and uh, guitar. Well, in fact, in, in fact, I'm submixing my vocal and guitar into, into one feed. But, um, but you do, you can have a talkback set up separately. So if you, you know, uh, you could be using your computer's microphone, for instance. So uh, we've got this little talkback switch here and it is latchable as well. And you can see we've got a mute all here. Uh, now, me and Robin here, obviously, there's a little chat window along the side here. And uh, I could just write, hello. Um, and uh, so all participants can also have this kind of chat going on as well. Um, uh, and then we can kind of shut that, I think. Uh, or I think, oops. We can do things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's quite uh, slick, actually. I like the way that the, the video moves out of the way for yep. the chat box to come in. There's there's some little elements yeah. within the web thing, which is which are quite quite pleasing. Yeah, close my chat there. Um, 
yeah so we've got like a, a typing chat so this video aspect is purely for communication purposes rather than uh, it will be slightly latent compared to the uh, audio um, but if we go into the settings here with a the cog then we, we, we can see we're running it at high quality but there is a, a maximum quality that we could run it at too um, now I should mention uh, r me and Robin live more or less exactly 250 miles away from each other uh, which is a reasonable distance certainly would make uh, playing music together really quite difficult ordinarily mm. um, but it should be it should be mentioned though that this system does have a kind of time um, sorry a distance limitation uh, 250 miles is maybe about the limit or maybe a little bit more but those of you wanting to jam across the Atlantic I think the latency might be a little bit too much um, however you know it might just just about be possible to get some East Coast action although I think just inherent latency in the speed of light is going to come into play at some point. Uh, so the the little Elk interface box itself is running like its own OS. So you don't need to be connected to that box. Doesn't need to be connected to the computer. It just simply needs a physical Ethernet cable connection mm. to your router. And then the any processing that goes on inside the box itself is sub one milliseconds and that's where a lot of the facility of this comes from is this incredibly low latency elk audio operating system i think that's what they developed first and then have learnt now sort of brought a piece of hardware in to facilitate this uh, there's dsp inside the uh, the unit as well although a lot of that dsp is currently untapped future updates are going to bring um I think some kind of VST hosting facility as well. Yeah, that's something that uh, Elk certainly did. That was the first thing that they did, wasn't it? I think running, trying to run VST plugins on their little bit of hardware. Yes. And so that it has the capability. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of unlocking it. I think. I did a feature for Sonic State uh, back, I think, in uh, Superbooth twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen, uh, where we had a first look at it, and um, they were using. Um, Steinberg's um, Prolog, uh, not Prolog, Retrolog. Retrolog. That's it. Yeah, Retrolog, um, running in real time, and that that was quite interesting. Uh, but I think this technology possibly is the most um, useful application of uh, Elk. Um, so, being able to play then in real time does pose certain kind of, you know interesting queries really um what we should do is probably try something just uh let's actually before we play some guitar let's just try clapping if we just try clapping together and see how well that how well we can clap together okay i must have look at the screen yeah that's great I mean, <laughs> we're trying to follow you on the video. It doesn't work. It yeah. doesn't work because that's behind. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, no accusations of us being happy clappers either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you were to look at the screen, that is a possible thing. Uh, they do mention that that that, that 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 the inherent latency in the display in the webcam isn't the latency of the audio. Should we play some blues? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, what else is there?
so I was uh, trying not to become an Ernie, an Ernie Ernie. Do you know what an Ernie? <laughs> do you know what an Ernie Ernie is? No, no. What's that then? It's a bit of a derogatory term for certain types of guitarists. Oh, but, okay. Um, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's the only thing I do. So I mean, that must be that must be my bit. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> um, but there, you see, in that little jam we were just doing, um, it was uh, it, it was uh, it was really fun because it was real time playing. Yeah, I mean, it, it worked. Yeah, yeah. So we were able to meaningfully play music together. Now. This is just two of us at the moment. Currently, elk an elk session can support up to five participants, uh, which I guess would cover quite a lot of bands. Um, now, that would mean, though, each member would have to not only have the elk hardware, but would have to have an elk account, which is a, a subscription-based thingy, Bobby, which. Mm, now that is a little bit of a you know a bit of an issue because that's going to cost I think is it eleven ninety nine euros a month? It was something like that. Something yeah. like that, yeah. So and the just, box, how much was that? One hundred and no, I think that's three hundred euros. Oh crikey! Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the cost of entry for this is quite high. Um, you know, so if it's a five a five piece band, you're looking at around fifteen hundred in initial investment just to get the hardware and then each of the five members all need to have a subscription so yeah. <laughs> that's kind of that's the tough that's the tough bit about this it is going to be quite expensive but yeah. it i guess you would kind of think about this uh if this allows you to play music maybe allows you to rehearse together um you could maybe cut down on your costs of rehearsals. Uh, um, but right now, it, it's important to say that the technology and where we're at with Elk is it, it's not the full feature set has not mm. fully come online yet. And once it does, I think it will start to become a little bit better value for money. Right now, I think it's just going to appeal for to certain people who are looking to have a rehearsal kind of setup or a jamming setup, um, there is a bit of a social media aspect to it. So you could kind of find people to jam with uh, who you don't know, you know, and uh, there's, that could be quite quite an interesting thing. But but features that are going to be coming are uh, there's going to be like an engineering mode where you could have another person with the system who can actually make uh mixes for real-time streaming um because although we're doing it now this is in order to facilitate this it's taking a lot of extra equipment i'm using my roland video streamer um mixing desk look a lot of cables going around so uh, a lot of you know i guess a lot of average average um, people that won't have all of that kind of setup uh, so in order to be able to use it for a streaming live streaming thing uh, isn't quite there yet but will be coming yeah, yeah. i mean the the box at the moment is like a solid stereo in and out box so mic guitar or you plug your piano in or whatever mm -hmm. it has enough it has enough for each person to jam along with each other it, it just yeah. there's nowhere to go after that once you start thinking along the lines of right. what could we doing do li like a live stream yeah mm. so yeah to do it as a live stream you yeah, yes there are there are ways to do it using third party and additional hardware but within the elk ecosystem at the moment that isn't something that it currently supports but it will do as will uh more inputs there are there is a um an ADAT input on the box as well uh which will give you another eight inputs into the system which would be quite good especially for drummers and people who want to do multi-miked setups although i'd imagine for re for the rehearsal side of things just making a stereo submix is probably the way to go anyway um but that brings me to another issue then, which is this idea about using Elk for um, remote recording studio purposes. Mm. Uh, again, that isn't really 
it's not really set up for that at the moment. You'd imagine might be that, like if we were to look around this this interface, that there might be some global records that will record the session. There, there isn't anything like that set up just yet. And something to bear in mind, when I was mentioning the engineer setup, if we were to look in the mixer, this mix is really for, you know, the mixer is for, for your own... Uh, your own monitoring purposes yes. in order to facilitate a front of house mix that the audience hear that's what this engineer or this engineer mode uh, I don't know if it's going to be called that but something like that where the, it, you get somebody who can actually then adjust all of the levels for a uh, yeah for a streaming thing but whilst I'm on this page though uh, we can see that on Robin Robin's page here we've got an, a buffer setting so we can adjust that you know um, I'm running it at 8 which I think it defaulted to and that seems to be okay but if you are having a little bit of glitches and a few issues then you can try increasing the buffer now if we had other people in this jam we'd be able to adjust their buffers independently too to try and increase the quality if you're having dropouts Mm. Um, we have experienced a couple of sort of uh, it's sort of like digital noise it's like um, uh, yeah. you know, CPU skipping type yeah. uh, issues from time to time mm -hmm. although today it's been pretty good um, we did have an issue with the video camera sort of acting up a little bit but by and large the actual music experience has been pretty solid today yeah um, but yeah, as I, as I mentioned, just like looking at the at the interface itself, it's simplicity itself, and they've they, you know, and they should be commended for that. For this uh, potentially complicated thing, this front end is quite simple, and because it's browser based, you can essentially open this in anything if that's on your home network. Um, yeah, they said that that they don't have an app like a, a phone app would be would be an a useful step at this at this juncture but um yeah uh no not at the moment but mm. that would be uh, another thing that could be along the way yeah yeah and also another thing that isn't currently f um implemented is a midi uh, there are midi ports on the elk box uh and at some point in the future midi will uh I think pretty soon, hopefully, um, MIDI will become a, a feature. Now mm. that'll that'll be great then because that'll allow for a whole load of things um, to do with synchronizing. If if I had, like, say, a drum machine and uh, and you wanted to maybe synchronize your effects unit to so to, so your delays are all synchronized to my drum machine, um, we could be sharing that. Mm. I mean, a central clock would be one one possibility, wouldn't it? So you mm -hmm. have so it's the our app or you know the software is generating a clock that we can all sync to via yeah. MIDI. Yeah, that's certainly one way uh, of doing it, or sending yours over over the internet to me. Yeah. Uh, now we've come up with a little way of synchronizing that we'll do shortly, where we because we're crazy. <laughs> But we found a way of making our modulus work by set, by using one of our two channels to send a gate signal through. So we'll set that up in a bit and then we'll show you that in action. Um, but just regarding the interface and anything else, is there, oh yes, so on the left hand side here we've got our we've got our master volume where, where we can you know we can adjust this and as I bring this down, that will affect what we can hear, as you'd expect. Um, let's bring it back up a little bit and you know mute switches at the bottom of here and you know there's a handy mute all switch as well to mute all participants um, yeah but there's not much else to it really is there I mean it really is pretty simple well as it has right now mm. uh, in the mixer though we can come down here and we could like come into the inputs and we could change whether our inputs are line inputs or mic inputs um, or whether they're coming from the USB so it, it, it the box could be connected to a computer and function as an audio interface uh, I think that's right isn't it Robin 
Yeah, I think so. But it would then you might start in experiencing the sort of latency you get through a computer. I mean, part of the beauty yes. of it is that it bypasses your computer. I mean, I'm recording the output of the elk into my computer, into my normal audio interface, but not monitoring it. I'm monitoring directly mm -hmm. the elk, so I get the low latency. But you are able to record just yes. by physically plugging these things together. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, yeah, then any inherent latency within your computer would be passed on to that then. Mm. So, But yeah. they did say that, you know, theoretically you could use software instruments in your door with it connected via USB, and then it would just... It would work more or less, you know. You mm. just got to take into account the computer latency. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. But I mean, uh, the fact that we're actually able to do this is superb. I mean, it's a shame it wasn't a few years ago when we were in lockdown. That would yes. have been really helpful. Yes. I mean, we don't quite know what the future holds for us, but uh, having experienced the kind of lockdown, knowing then that there is a system that can allow us to play music together remotely is uh, is kind of pretty nice. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's play some more music. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and clean up my guitar sound a bit. <laughs> We should sing a song. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, so I mean, I suppose for musicians to get used to working this way, I, uh, maybe the lockdown has kind of got average people more into using video communication a lot of people were quite reticent to do that so perhaps now this idea of webcam to webcam peer-to-peer -peer kind of uh communication is mm. a, is a lot less uh daunting for people perhaps so this, yeah this i mean when you're talking about the simplicity of the interface i think that's that's quite key because it needs to be simple enough for musicians to understand i mean i know we're all technical techn technology wizards but we also just want to be able to plug it in you know set a yeah. level and then start playing together that has mm -hmm. to be that that straightforward yeah and you know i guess that's the thing with this elk system you could be you know you know no computer i mean i mm. i've got it coming through a mixer and various things like that but headphones straight into the little yellow box guitar microphone straight into the yellow box no computer in sight. Uh, well, you need a computer <laughs> for, for for the communication side of things. But but essentially, once once the session is configured, you could close your laptop, couldn't you? Yeah. That's the laptop isn't the session itself. Once the session is made, or is it? Actually, I don't know. I might be wrong about that. Um, yeah, it's definitely run by the web browser. I mean, we you know, we've had to we've had the odd crash where mm. we had to close the browser and that stops yeah. the session and so it's all it's all run there. Yeah. I mean, although well it certainly the it's cuz you go to this studio.elk.live I think it is and it's that that is making the communication between the two boxes or at least turning them on to each other. Yeah. You know, cuz it can't go through the web can it oh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i suppose the point i was just trying to make though is that that it, it isn't dependent at all on your computer but That's right. uh it, so uh um let's make up a song robin let's make up a song you have you got any chords for me and then i'll come up with some words Nice. I'm gonna sing a song about my little yellow box. <laughs> my little yellow box, it brings me out in chicken pox. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I suppose the thing that's really cool is the fact that we're making music and we could actually we could actually be in the nude we could <laughs> thankfully we're not but in terms of you know 
being able to, you know, being in your dressing gown or just, uh, you know, just turn your webcam off. <laughs> <laughs> bizarre though it is actually bizarre it is really happening <laughs> it is yeah we're here right we're right yeah. we're proper light jamming in there yeah yeah and i think just a, just a little quiet little noodle thing there was just making me think oh this is cool it feels like being able to play with someone directly with you in the room yeah. It's most odd so so for in that way the elk is well, it's probably the only system that can really do that that I'm aware of. I know there are a few other protocols for that facilitate something similar, but nothing quite this mm. fast. And uh, I, 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 my reticence to fully recommend it really is in that it is there's quite a high price to. Uh, to invest in to get in it set up but for some people it's going to be the only solution i guess um but something we should mention though is it also does necessitate that you do have to have a good internet connection yes if you don't have a good internet connection it can't help you it's going you it so the ping and you know the um your upload and download speeds are, are really going to affect just how how smooth this experience is. Yeah, I mean you're on super fast, I think, at where you are, aren't you? Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm not, but I'm on like forty, forty down, ten up. Yeah, kind of, kind of regular fast fairly, broadband, yeah. uh, and it is holding it together. Yeah. Now, and I'm out in the sticks as well. Aren't I? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And two hundred fifty miles away. Let's not yes, forget. Let's not forget. Um, but you can adjust a few things to help you. For instance, the bandwidth that this webcam communication is, is taking up, you could turn a camera off and then that would free up some. Uh, and also then, as we saw, there's a few settings like reducing the buffers or um, changing the, the quality uh, of the sound could, could help as well. But this seems to be working quite well. We've been online now for a couple of hours and it's working really nicely. It is, yeah. Yeah. Is. So I think there's a there's a definite uh, roadmap then, as we mentioned, alluded to. There's uh, various functions which are currently not available that will be coming <laughs> out. We don't know when. We um, don't know. I mean, the, the thing with that is that I feel a little bit is that when we've been talking to Elk for probably six months, we, we had a first conversation with them about it. 
and nothing has really changed. There's been little tweaks to the web interface, mm -hmm. but we're still waiting yeah. on the extra inputs and the MIDI and the this and, the, and that. And yeah. it's it's a slow road, I mm. suppose, and it, it feels that it would be, as you said before, be better value for money if a few more of these features came online. Yeah. In certain cases, this will be... It could, in fact, save money, couldn't it? If you're... If you like in the dis like f for me and you the distance two hundred and fifty miles away um, fuel costs now especially now is going to be quite considerable. Mm. Um, so there are ways of kind of balancing maybe the investment against what it actually can can bring. Um, but as as mentioned, if you are seeing this and thinking, "Wow, this would be brilliant for doing your live streams," um, yeah. Bear in mind that it would require quite a bit of extra kit and know-how to to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, similarly, when we're talking about um, collaborative recording, as you mentioned this earlier, um, although that you know, the sound quality is good, but you're not going to get the same. I mean, I guess you'd be recording locally, but it, it's not really designed for that uh, persona sphere or um, Pro Tools collaboration system it's not really yeah. that is it it's much no. more for this this raw mm. musical interaction of, of jamming and yeah and making music as opposed to a sound engineering and recording system perfectly put yeah exactly i can imagine where it would be amazing though is if you work with a songwriter mm. uh, then i think this would be like a brilliant system so uh so after ascertaining that we can do live music, jamming, grooving, singing, all sorts of stuff together, what will happen if we try and bring our modular worlds together? So that's the next thing that sort of me and Robin have been trying to do, which is by uh, one of us sending a gate to the other, then uh, by using one of our available audio channels. So obviously there's a slight downside in this, in that... The audio Robin is receiving from me isn't stereo anymore. He's just getting a mono feed. Um, but for me, I can still hear Robin's playback in stereo. So that's the only drawback of doing this. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, that, that'll be fine in a lot of cases. Now, with sending an audio click, we have to kind of think about the routing handily if we look in the uh oh here's robin <laughs> uh if i look in the mixer for a moment this is my monitoring here of uh of my signals so i only want to hear my left channel which is going to be my voice on my modular whereas this right signal if i turn it up then we would just hear the gate pulses so Robin takes those gate pulses, so out of his left and right outputs of his uh, elk box, he'll run one into his mixer and then the other out and then into some modular which accepts a clock. So Robin, tell me about uh, tell me about the setup that you've got then your end. Yeah, so as you say, I take a I take um, the left side, for instance, out of the back of the elk. And that contains the clock from you. And I've got to make sure that that's all it contains because otherwise the, the modular gets very screwed up as we've been <laughs> discovering. Yeah. And so in in my mixer, uh, I've got all of my monitoring panned left, actually funnily enough, and the the click from you panned right. So even my monitoring, because the outbox monitors as well as um, takes your audio, it's also monitoring my audio. And it's getting your head around exactly what is mixing what. So my headphones, for instance, are, are no longer plugged into the elk box because that would just mean I'm monitoring on the left side and that would be rubbish. <laughs> so I've taken yeah. the the right hand output of the elk box, put that in my normal audio interface. And now I'm monitoring that in mono, but centered mm. through that. So my headphones are in that box and that seems to work. And then at um, at my end over on the modular... Mm -hmm. which you will see in some magic of our camera cutting. <laughs> um, I've got it plugged into uh, an inter instrument interface from Bafaco, which is just taking the audio signal, because we found, we, we plugged, initially we just plugged the pulse into my system, but it, it just didn't seem to take. It was 
I don't know, not defined enough maybe as it came over the internet. And so plugging it into an instrument interface, which is essentially an envelope follower, it uh, it receives the click, it creates a new envelope, a nice clean trigger for it, and it has a trigger output. So essentially it's just cleaned up that trigger and that can now successfully trigger the rest of my system. And that's going into a clock divider or a malt and a clock divider. Yeah. So I can use it in different things. So I reckon it's a lot to do with getting line level back up to modular to make those make them really healthy gates to kind of yeah, that, push that, them over the to push them over the line there exactly yeah that that could be some of it yeah uh, so right so if i got all mine i got all my sounds turned off but if i press start uh so i got it on here on the pamela's new workout nestled in here then the big yellow button there will start everything going so i'll get the mic i'll get the clock going but i've got nothing no sound coming here so robin you should be seeing here we go and i start on the pams i press the big yellow button then that'll start the clock what speed robin do i want <laughs> so these different sort of subdivisions that might be quite funky. Let's switch in my drums. So it's locked. It's locked. Only being able to just really, I could really mess with your head here. <laughs> I like it fundamentally what I'm doing, like this far away from you. yellow button do it <laughs> so you hear the mysterious cosmic wheels grinding is that hang on and there they go <laughs> <laughs> um so that's fun isn't it that's yeah. actually proper jamming um and it's working it is my thoughts 
that's a lot of fun. And like initially there, we were like going from a testing thing to actually starting to jam and have fun. Yeah. So as you can see, that was really working well with a uh, with with a gate to link up the two systems. Uh, it would have been really nice if they'd have put something like that into the box itself. Like if they'd have put an audio sync input. Imagine that, Robin, mm. on on the on the on the Elk box. If we'd uh, if you had that an audio in and out gate. Yeah, don't definitely. Yes, for the Elk Mark II, definitely think about that, Elk people. <laughs> um, so but however that was fun wasn't it we were mm. we were we were playing music together then and and it, it it feels really good it doesn't feel in any way unsynced if no I'm... no the, the only problem you got is, is the usual problems with trying to jam together with, with yeah. modular yeah. which is like what the heck am i doing what what's he heck? doing and, Ooh, yeah, and yeah that kind of thing yeah well, we'll have a little play out and have another little jam that we'll stick on the end of here. But um, just uh, closing thoughts, then, Robin. Um, mm. It's when you use this, it's undeniably fun and it absolutely works. We can both yes. attest to that, can't we? Yeah, yeah, undoubtedly. Mm. Uh, it's a, it is expensive. How do you tackle that side mm. of it? It has to come down to how often you use it. I mean. If you're someone who's doing this all the time, then you know it, it makes a lot of sense. I, I kind of feel. I mean, it's like with with me and you trying to get together to actually do this has been a challenge because we're busy people. We're doing this, that, and the other. Yes. And so when you come back to plug it in, I've got to find it. It's dropped down the side of my cabinet. You know, I've got to plug it back in and work that back back out again. So if it's a if it's an occasional thing, I think it's it's quite it can be quite hard work mm. to, to, to maintain that. And then there's the cost and you're going to see it come up every month. That's, you know, it's another 10, 15 quid or whatever. And I haven't used it this month. Yeah. So, and also because it's reliant on somebody else, yeah. you feel doubly aggrieved because it's like, well, I'm here every day, mm -hmm. but none of the people I want to jam with are available. Yeah, so um, you know. yes, so so those bandmate <laughs> problems don't sort of magically kind of uh, get repaired with this system. No. Uh, however, it does do what it's setting out to do in principle, isn't it? That yeah. it's it's facilitating real time music performance over the internet. Um, the features that they have got promised, for me, would change its value. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think that. Right now, I think you have to have a very specific need for it, for it to be, you know, for me to fully recommend it. I mean, it works. We've proved that it works, and it works really well. But, the, yeah, you mentioned certain things there about, like, the logistics of making this happen. As we move in further into the 21st century, who knows what might happen, maybe more maybe travel does become less uh you know less easy things maybe change in the future meaning that that this kind of technology becomes essential for creative you know mm. experience yeah um sorry to get a little bit philosophically <laughs> gloomy there uh, <laughs> but it works and it works really, really well. Yeah. If you can afford it, go for it. If you would see it being part of your workflow and regular, as you mentioned, then go for it. I think everybody else, sit tight, keep an eye on the developments. We'll mm. hopefully get back together uh, and make something in the future when uh, when these upgra upgrades appear, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because I think... You know, I would definitely reappraise my feeling of it. I feel bad to criticise it in a way when they've done such a good job. And mm. so the criticism isn't so much aimed at the product. It's more just it's the combination of a reasonably large upfront investment and then a monthly subscription for everybody. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's it's a hard one to swallow. Although we are getting more familiar with subscription services on our audio equipment these days. I mean, you know, yeah. you could drop a couple of Waves plugins or or something, and then it might pay for itself. It's, 
I don't know. It really comes down to your use case scenario. You know, it's what you're what you're doing, whether you can see the value of it. I mean, I've also yeah. thought about, or, or we talked to them about, could they do some simpler boxes, which are you know somehow cheaper, just one in and out or something, mm. so that you could buy a few and mail them out to your I mean, to your mates in some kind of I don't know, I, <laughs> trying to find a, a I, slightly simple. I would I would think that a good thing for them to do is to give maybe i mean it'd probably be too expensive for them to do that but to give you a year's use when you buy it you get a year's license or at least six month license oh something's that? something's coming through something's coming through <laughs> is that from me or from you that's from you well something's coming from you but it's triggering things at my end ah Oh, what's that? That's some gate gate leakage. Oh, see, look, it's picked up my it's picked up the voice again. I'm gonna have to go and re-pan things. Now, this I, is I, this is something that happened a couple of times. We couldn't quite work out. Is that I had to go and re-pan all of the channels in the mixer because it was bleeding from one to another. Uh, it's almost like the settings from the web thing don't quite stick. So now it's gone away because I've re-panned everything. Yeah, no MIDI connected to it? No, because there's no MIDI that's no, working yet. No, it's just a bit of weirdness. A bit of weirdness. <laughs> well, hey, speaking of a bit of weirdness, yes. fancy uh, making a bit more weirdness? Yeah, let's give that a go. All right. So, Robin, thank you so much for taking time out for, you know... Uh, for making this with me and uh, well we're doing well, this together well, you're welcome guess, yeah we? no, saying, coming right back at you fella yeah, yeah. no okay. it's it's been interesting trying to 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 do this and i and i wonder what <laughs> i wonder what our videos will look like after this and what we should do mm. is that once our videos are out there we should get together for a bit of a a live stream on it perhaps yeah. to give people a chance to ask questions and we can do our best to well, sound intelligent yeah and actually if we did we could do a, jam, a live jam as well couldn't we with an audience because we could stream yeah. it through this system but actually let's just just to re recap on that before we go you know just to reiterate really that if you wanted to use elk for doing live streams you would have to consider more than just elk itself yes yeah, yeah i yeah. think that's the thing so i'm using a roland streamer mixer here and two computers to facilitate being able to do this there's ways you can do it from one system for sure but um i think again as mentioned earlier the thing that they've got new stuff coming uh new new features that significantly enhance how it could be for more people i suppose how you could do more maybe commercial things with it as well mm. is coming so watch this space well, well rather watch this space or watch this outer space that we create <laughs> <laughs> thanks robin cheers That's mate cheers so big thanks to Robin there. Lots of fun. Interesting. Really, really interesting. Reiterating those points. I think it is quite expensive, so you have to be very committed, but it is like nothing else on the planet. So if you want to be totally cutting edge, right ahead of the curve, then elk is the way. I think the planned updates are really exciting and so my advice would be to hang on in there keep an eye on it and wait for those big updates to drop and then i think that's the time to join it but for those of you who want to just get down and dirty and get jamming straight away then this is the only ticket in town anyway i'm gas williams thanks so much for watching bye and thanks again to robin